Hi, my name is Paul Weaver and it's so good to be with you and to be able to share a thought today. I'm looking really at the subject of realizing our potential. When Emma Raducanu won the Women's USA Open, young tennis players from all over the country were being interviewed and were saying things like this, I can do that. I can realize my dream. I can do anything I choose to do. It is interesting that the Bible seems to endorse such an aspiration in phrases like, I can do all things and nothing is impossible to God. Is there a difference between realizing your potential and being able to do or become whatever you set your mind to achieve? Where did such a philosophy come from? And is the Bible supporting this concept? The dictionary defines potential as having or showing the capacity to develop into something in the future. Do we all have the same measure of potential? Do we all have the same core skills? The answer is most definitely no. If you were always last in the 100 meters race, you may improve but there is little hope of you winning the race. Why? Because they define potential in the person who always wins the race has a different potential application to the one you have in running the 100 meters. Some Olympians realized early in their sports journey that their potential was in a different sport. By changing their sport, they became successful Olympians. All of us have different potentials, potential, different capacities and different skills, but we can all succeed if we recognize what our personal strength and potential is and then work hard to maximize it. Where did the delusion of being able to succeed in whatever you set your mind to do come from? Well, such phrases are part of the secular system in which we live that has shifted its possibility base away from working with God to a world of self-power and promotion. You might say, but wait a minute, what about the verse in the Bible that says we can do all things? Well, the full quote is, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. This verse has, yes, the potential dimension, I can do all things, but it also has a conditional clause to realizing potential. Through him who gives me strength. What does God strengthen us to do? Well, the simple answer is his will. This is the context of Paul's argument. He is talking about his contentment in doing God's will. That journey, of course, has its ups and downs. Uh, the road is, uh, to success is not always an easy one. Paul had times of need, times of plenty. Things went well and things didn't go so well on that journey. But at the end of the day, by doing the will of God, he becomes the one who realizes his potential. The will of God does not always look like success, but it always is success. Planted in each one of us are the seeds of success. The key to realizing that potential is, I believe, our surrender to the will of God. It's time probably to have a reality check, to dump disillusionary aspirations and surrender to God the life he shaped you to be in your mother's womb, then you will know joy, fulfillment, success, and your potential will be realized. Everyone who does the will of God is resourced divinely to be a winner. Paul the Apostle ended his life having done the will of God. His reward was a crown of righteousness. So remember, when you're living in the world of so-called success, 
Remember when the Olympic gold medals have faded away and the stars of this passing world are remembered no more. Those who do the will of God will be crowned and honoured eternally by the King. I'm sure that is what you want. And in obtaining that by the grace of God, you will be eternally blessed. So let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to steer clear of empty dreams and delusionary sayings and instead to commit our lives to doing your will. Amen. Have a great day and continue to walk the road of the will of God.